Today's video is brought to you by Bespoke Post. Hey, brother! Yes, I know, my hair is different. Thank you for all the comments in advance. Jay, Roanoke just ended its longest streak in history of 90 degree plus days. So what better time for us to talk about Frozen. I'm pretty sure we make that exact same joke literally every single time we ever make a Frozen video, which is apparently always in summer. But today we are going to be traveling all the way back in time to Frozen 1 and discussing the true villain, Hans. Christian Anderson's original villain for the Snow Queen fairy tale. The Trolls. Or, well, maybe more specifically, if you go back to the original fairy tale, it was the devil in disguise as a troll. And you know what they say? Potato Patrol, though. I don't know if they say that. But either way, if that's not suspicious, then I don't know what could be. So today, we're going to discuss why the trolls are the true villain in Frozen. <laughs> Guys, before we dive on into the video, I need to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Bespoke Post. I love mail, so much so that I literally just wait with my two dogs, Chewie and Indy, for the mailman to arrive every day. And whenever he finally gets there, I'm always like, Jim, good morning, how are you? You go water skiing last weekend, the weather was choice, was it not? And you might be wondering, is that really a true story? And it's not, his name is Bill. But Bill is great because he has gnarly water skiing stories and because he brings me my mail. Which, let's face it, 90% of the time, is coupons that I will never use, political flyers, utility bills, and when did mail stop being fun? The good news is that at least once a month, Indy Chewy and I get extra stoked because he's carrying the latest box of awesome from Bespoke Post. My latest box was this super sleek growler that came with two stainless steel cups that keep everything you're drinking either hot or cold. Great, no matter which time of year you're enjoying Frozen. But if that's not your fancy, first of all, suit yourself. But never fear, they have a great collection from style and grooming goods to barware, cooking tools, outdoor gear, and hold up, is that a fanny pack? I know what I am getting next month. Oh, I see they technically call it a cross body bag. That's kind of odd when fanny pack is so cool. Each box costs $45 and comes packed with over $70 worth of gear and you can get 20% off when you go to boxofawesome.com and use promo code super at checkout. Again, that is boxofawesome.com, promo code super at checkout for 20% off. Link is in the description down below. The woman who cuts my hair specifically told me not to put lightener in it when I went on vacation because it would turn like a super coppery color, but I don't know, I feel like it turned out... Okay, so I don't know whether to start with Hans or the trolls first, because to be completely honest with you, neither of them really make sense. Let's start with Hans. We meet him when Anna is mid-song about the gates finally being opened, the potential to potentially meet the one. Yes, I'm aware I said potential twice in the same sentence, but I stand by it. She runs directly into his horse and then falls into a boat and then he falls into the boat and then the boat almost falls into the water and then you're gorgeous. Wait, what? The scene is actually super cute and adorable and before Hans even knows who Anna is, he's being polite and respectful and charming. <laughs> all good things, all good things. And then she leaves because the coronation is happening and she's late, oh no! And then he actually does fall into the water and you all know where I'm going with this because it drives me absolutely crazy. If Hans has this great big plan to take over Arendelle because he's 13th in line for the Southern Isles, then why on earth is he smiling underneath this boat right here? Like, Ugh. What? Why? Why is he smiling right here? This is not like a menacing smile either, like I found the one! Apparently when Hans is in villain mode, he's also Dracula. No, I'm sorry, that is one hondo, the kind of smile you give after you've just met someone who gives you warm fuzzies. Our mom used to say when we were kids, whenever she was making a big life decision, that like something would give her warm fuzzies. Like, you know, we walked into the new house and we just had warm fuzzies right away. And not for nothing, our mom's warm fuzzy meter is deadly accurate. And no, it has nothing to do with this video, but I do think it needs to be said more. Anyway, Hans gets warm fuzzies. And then even just moments after meeting each other for the second time, they literally break into a straight bop complete with choreography. And you know, I do tend to agree with Kristoff, you probably shouldn't marry somebody that you just met, you know, that day. But if you meet someone that day and can immediately break into a song like that with like dancing, 
Maybe they are the one! Also, Kristoff, you're the one to talk. You've known her for like, what, two days? Anyway, things seem to be going really, really well. But then... Here's a true love's kiss. You're not worth it! Guess what? I'm the bad guy! What?! That reaction from Lieutenant Mateus is like, possibly one of my favorite moments in all of Disney. What?! Here's the thing, though. It really does come out of nowhere. Like I've literally combed through this movie up until the grand reveal and there are zero indications that he is anything other than a perfectly fine dude. There is soup and hot glog in the great hall. Other than, you know, of course, Kristoff being completely awesome. And no, it's not that he just loves ice as much as I do. Okay, it's not not. But guys, seriously, how awesome is ice? Oh, but it's so hard to get clear ice. And yes, I have tried boiling the water first. Thank you. It does not work. And yes, I have also tried distilled water. Okay. And yes, obviously, I installed a super high end sophisticated reverse osmosis deionization system. And that does not work either. It actually comes down to the way that you freeze the ice. It needs to be like properly insulated from all sides and you're almost always gonna get some cloudy ice and then the real trick comes down to how you separate the cloudy ice away from like the clear ice and it's really just not that efficient. That's really the problem. Ugh, why can't my backyard be a perfectly frozen lake? This is why I keep telling Jay that we need to have a summer home in Norway. And I keep saying yes. Do you see what I'm dealing with here? I'm never gonna have clear ice. I'm looking at listings right now. Anyway, prior to the grand reveal that Hans is in fact a total buffied, ha, that's like, you know, butthead, but like, you know, you squish it together and you use the thus down, <laughs> buffied. Totally hilarious. There isn't any indication that this guy is anything other than a delightful young chap. There is soup and hot glog in the great hall. But that does not mean that there isn't possibly something that happens literally inside of the movie that makes him that way. And also, to be fair, the lovely folks over at Disney are in fact trying to misdirect you here. They do not want you to be able to predict this is what's going to happen. But Here's the thing, the plan, according to this misdirect, doesn't even make sense. For example, why does he save Elsa? According to his own plan, the goal was to arrange some type of accident to get her out of the way. I figured after we'd married, I'd have to stage a little accident for Elsa. Like Hans, dude! What are you doing? You found her in an ice castle on the side of the mountain. She was openly attacking people and the townspeople were terrified of her. Not to mention she caused an endless winter and a giant snow monster who is named Marshmallow and that does help, but still. This is the most accident prone and justifiable death situation you could have possibly asked for. Not only that, he's like, actively talking her down. Don't be the monster they fear you are. Don't you want her to be the monster they fear you are? Doesn't that help your cause? Yeah, no, I, I have no way but believing anything other than at this point in time, he is genuinely just trying to get her back to the castle and not have anybody harmed along the way. And yes, you might could argue that the reason that he wants to keep her alive is because he still needs to find a way to end the eternal winter. But even that gets underscored later on when he goes to kill her while the endless winter is still very much happening and he don't care. So what changes? Why does he suddenly go all bad? Personally, I think it all starts right here where Anna gets hit in the heart with ice magic and Kristoff takes her to be healed. And that is when the real villains step in, the trolls. I guess they really like roll in. As we said earlier, in the original fairy tale that Frozen is based off of, the villain is the devil himself disguised as a troll. And on top of that, in Scandinavian culture, trolls are not known for being helpful to humans at all. These characters are not exactly being sourced from a place of like, peace and harmony with humans. But I will say upfront that I don't think that the trolls are actively malicious or anything. I just think they have their own agenda and they don't seem to really care what happens to who or what is affected by the outcome. Their main objective, and I will admit it is strange, seems to be get Kristoff married. And they don't really seem to care what Kristoff thinks about it or the bride for that matter. Just that it happens. Consent be darned. Let's be clear here, consent not be darned. And this same thing seems to be true when they adopt Kristoff. Cuties. 
I'm going to keep you. That is not how adoption works. Like, we all just kind of accept when we meet him and Sven that they are orphans out on their own. But we are also introduced to them on a dangerous job site with lots of grown men around them. Like, one of them could have been his dad, right? Like, these guys surely are not just letting this little kid run around and work beside them completely unsupervised, right? And then it kind of seems like nobody even notices that he's gone. The trolls don't check to see what his parentage is. They just adopt him. Even if one of those men is not his father, don't you think one of them would be like, wasn't there a kid that used to run around here? But no, it just seems like everyone forgot. And it's not like the trolls can make everybody forgo oh, crud muffins. Even memories of magic to be safe. Yeah, the trolls are a bit of an odd case. Like overall, they seem good natured and caring and helpful, but loads of things do not add up. And some of their advice is literally just plain wrong. Let's just review that a little bit. At the beginning of the movie, we see them heal Anna by literally making her forget things. Specifically that magic exists, but then later in life, Anna learns magic exists and no ramifications. So what was the point of not telling her and making Elsa stay away from her for 10 years? I mean, it tears both of their relationships completely apart, leaves them in utter isolation and drives their parents to go and look for some kind of a cure, which leads to their death. Their parents are dead. And in case you've forgotten, that's extra problematic because they were the literal king and queen. And it turns out that the secret keeping literally drives Elsa to become a recluse where she has absolutely no control of her powers because she fears them so much. And it's not until she actually embraces those powers that she has control over them. Also, the people of Arendelle readily accept this characteristic of their queen, like with no qualms. Basically immediately. What actually happens is the powers show up and the Duke of Weaselton confirms her worst fears is that they're bad and then she basically leaves before anyone else has a moment to even react. But it is completely clear that by the end of the movie, the town is perfectly okay with this, even though the eternal winter could have really caused significant problems for everyone's livelihood. In fact, if anything, I feel like they should have been a little bit more mad at her. But they're not. So what were the trolls so afraid of? On top of that, the grandpappy like claims to be this total expert on the powers and stuff, although he offers absolutely no solutions on how to control them. The actual solution ultimately ends up being love, which may not be an issue, except the trolls are literally self-proclaimed love experts. I understand your love experts. Speaking of which, let's go back to their song, Fixer Upper, where they're trying to get Kristoff married to Anna, even though both of them are not prepared for that decision, where they specifically sing the line, get the fiance out of the way. Get the fiance out of the way. Now, at first they just sort of try to ignore Hans altogether and just marry Kristoff and Anna anyway. But when Anna faints and they know that the solution is having a true love's first kiss, that's when they rush her to Hans and I think when they step in. And how they step in is pretty much by turning Hans away from Anna. It's not until after they leave the trolls that we start to see Hans begin to act like the villain and it's in ways that don't totally make sense. As he monologues, he explains that he would need to marry into the throne due to his, you know, 12 brothers. As 13th in line in my own kingdom, I didn't stand a chance. I knew I'd have to marry into the throne somewhere. And that Elsa would actually be the preferred option, but nobody was getting anywhere with her. But like, when did you even try? The first time you ever talked to Elsa is literally after you've proposed to Anna. Then he says that he would have needed to arrange an accident for Elsa after he had married Anna. I figured after we married, I'd have to stage a little accident for Elsa. But like we said earlier, he completely forewent many accident prone opportunities. And now he's not going to marry Anna? Like why? One sentence ago, you were literally okay with marrying Anna and killing Elsa. Marrying Anna will still put you in power. And I don't even think you'd have to do anything to get Elsa out of the way. I have a feeling that she would just, you know, step down or be imprisoned or literally go away. She literally already left. In fact, I'm pretty sure she even offers to again. Why did you bring me here? I'm a danger to Arendelle. She wants to leave. You're about to marry the next in line. 
What is your problem? Telling Anna the plan is the dumbest thing that you can do and doesn't make sense with anything else you've done. You didn't try to get to know Elsa in the first place. You didn't kill her when the chance and you literally stopped others from killing her when they were about to. All that really seems to have changed is that the trolls realized that you were in the way of Anna marrying Kristoff. So let me see if I have all of this correct. One, you kidnap a child. Two, you erase another child's memory. Three, you submit another one to a lifetime of isolation. Then try to get two people to get married that do not want to get married, at least not at that point in time. Spoilers, they do later. And finally, they try to get the fiance out of the way by changing his memories and turning him into a villain. Also that your kidnapped son can end up with someone who he does ultimately end up with, could call on that one, sooner than he's supposed to. Guys, be sure to tune in this Friday night at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that is August 14th, where we're going to be hosting another trivia challenge live here on the Super Carlin Brothers channel. This week, we're going to be covering a medley of topics, Any Anything we discuss here on the SCB channel, Disney, Pixar, Star Wars, Harry Potter, Marvel, and maybe a few of the last Airbender questions. Do you have what it takes to be the champion of them all? Be sure to tune in this Friday to find out. In fact, just set a reminder in your phone right now. Be like, hey, Super Carlin Brothers, Friday night, 6 p.m., be there. Okay, I'll do it. See you then. Otherwise, guys, for my question of the day, what do you think? Are the trolls the true villain of Frozen? Be sure to leave your thoughts in the towel section down below. And guys, as always, Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you'd like some more Frozen action from us, you can check out this video right here where we deep dive into that early ice harvesting scene, which is actually like historically correct. So be sure to check that out. Otherwise, until next week, bye.